Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Archbishop and Father Salvas, the honorable presbyters, the deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our country, the president, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us in this holy house in your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplication. The pangs of death encompass me, the perils of hate have found me. I suffered distress and anguish, and I called on the name of the Lord. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. I will live to please the Lord in the land of the living. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. I believe, therefore I spoke, but I was greatly afflicted. So, so we must see What shall I render to the Lord for all that he has given me? Save us, O Son of God, who rode on a donkey colt. Save us, 
Receive the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will offer to you the sacrifice of praise and will pray in the name of the Lord. Save us, O Son of God. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. I'm reading our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Master and Lord our God, you've established in heaven the orders and hosts of angels and archangels to minister to your glory. Grant that the holy angels may enter with us, that together we may serve and glorify your goodness. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages.
buried through you, through with you through baptism, O Christ our God, and thus by your resurrection we have been granted immortal life, and extolling you we cry aloud, Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you the one who comes in the name of the Lord. In heaven, upon the throne, on earth, upon the coal, you were carried, O Christ our God, and the praise of the angels and the hymns of the children you received as thy cry to you. Blessed are you, the one who is coming to call Adam back again. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy God, you dwell among your saints, you are praised by the seraphim with the thrice holy hymn, and glorified by the cherub and worshiped by all the heavenly powers. You brought all things out of nothing in being. Let us be attentive. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And to the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, 
brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there's any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace will be with you. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly ointment of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. But Judas Iscariot, one of the, his disciples who was to betray him said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and as he had the money box, he used to take what was put into it. Jesus said, let her alone, and let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only on account of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus also to death, because on account of him many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The next day a great crowd who had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it. As it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that it has been written of him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. Wisdom grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. served as our high priest and Lord of all and trusted us to celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. You alone, Lord, our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You're seated on the throne of the cherubim, Lord of the seraphim, the King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You're alone and good and ready to be there for glory. You look upon me, a sinful and unworthy servant. You cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, the vessel of the grace of peace, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. 
Pray come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me nor reject me from among your children. Make me your sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer these gifts for you. Christ, our God of the offer, and the offer of one who receives and is distributed. And you we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life giving Trinity. Let us set aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia. Ita hiero vi mysticos iconis nos ketis opio triadi ton trisaiun imen prosadun espasent in viotiki na potomatha meriman. Os ton vasileon ton omen ipodexomenites angelikes auratos to riforum. Alexuia, alleluia, alleluia. Come, let us worship God our King and bow down before him. Defte proskinisum ite prospesum in Christota vasileon ton omen. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ himself, our King and our God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come on, faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, according to the multitude of tender mercy, blot of my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins are before you. Against you only have I sinned and done that for evil in your sight, you will just when you speak and you bring it to Behold, I was brought forth from the iniquity and sin of the Lord. Wash me and shame my Turn your face away from my sins, the blood on my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart of God, and a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from the presence of God, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the dream of the Spirit, and show up my lips and Jesus. Sacrifice to God. God, remember those who love us and those who hate us. Remember all of us 
in his kingdom, always, now, and forever, and unto the ages of ages. God, remember your priestly and mercy, always, now, and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Yes, o Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, the guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Yes. Forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. This, o Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us, with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. And let us love one another, that with one mind we may confess. Christ is I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my one, my fortress, and my deliverance. the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. 
He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son were worshiped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, to praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable beyond comprehension, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not so cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. For all things we know and do not know. For blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels. By the cherubim and the seraphim. Six winged, many eyed, soaring with their wings. Singing the victory hymn. Proclaiming, crying out, and saying... Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broken, gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Das don son si prosperomen, kata panda kedhia panda. Please bow your heads through the end of the next hymn.
We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, O Lord our God. Once again, we offer to you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts here presented. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. O may God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that they may be to those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. And we offer you this spiritual worship for those who are opposed in the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, professors, and saints. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Salvas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name, of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our loving God, who has received them at His holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may return and send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. We entrust to you, loving Master, our whole life and hope we ask, pray, and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience. 
for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence, without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pater imon, o en Israelis, aliestito ton amasu, al teto i vasiliasu, yanithito to thelimasu, o semuranon ke epitizis, tornatum imon ton epiusion, dosim in simeron, Τα σκεφαλά σημών το κυρίο κλείνω με. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things, and by your great mercy you have brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel and heal the sick, physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place in the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with your Father, and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us, let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand. And through us to all your people, God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. Let us be attentive, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. Confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your prayer mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment, and being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus, Let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, 
but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body, and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God, place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your enemies, nor will I give you a distress to Judas, but like the thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ our immortal King.
Good morning, Ronya Pola, to everyone, a blessed feast, and welcome to all of you. What a joy to see the house of the Lord filled this morning with your smiling and worshiping faces and souls. Uh, as we come forward for Holy Communion, we ask you to please uh, ha wait until the parish council dismisses you. Everyone will come in from the center aisle. Please wait until you are dismissed. There will be two chalices, one on either side. There is no church school today, so children, please return back to your seats with your families. Regarding the receiving of Holy Communion, as we know, which, which, commu which conveys to us only health, well-being, healing, and salvation, uh, we ask you to take extreme caution as you come forward. There will be two acolytes at each chalice. They will hold the cloth under your chin. You do not need to touch the cloth, but allow them to make sure it connects between the chalice and your chin, and God forbid in the event that anything does spill, that the purpose of the cloth is to catch that. Uh, also, as you receive Holy Communion, those of you who are Orthodox Christians who have prepared properly during this Lenten season to come forward, may come forward all others. We ask you to remain where you are, and you will receive the Blessed Bread, the Andideron, at the end of the service, and we enjoy, invite you to join us for fellowship as well. As you receive for Holy Communion, as you know, as you've most all grown up with, the traditional way of receiving Holy Communion is to open your mouth, offer, well, offer your name first, your baptismal name, open your mouth, and then allow the spoon to go in, close your mouth so that none of the gifts are spread anywhere else, and then the spoon will be removed. If you prefer, we give you the option to receive with your open mouth as the Antiochians and some other Orthodox practice. You are welcome to do that, however, under one condition, as I've explained before, those of you perhaps haven't been here to hear it before. Uh, you must, absolutely must, open your mouth wide, put your head back, and open it completely wide so that the spoon can turn and drop the communion in your mouth. Otherwise, it's not, it just won't happen. So you, we will just wait until you close your mouth and pull the spoon out. So we ask for your complete cooperation so we respect the holy gifts of the body and the blood of Christ, that they are not spilled anywhere, that they are taken extreme care of, and that you receive them worthily as a gift of salvation from our Lord and Savior, who has come today in his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. God bless you all. May God have mercy on us. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
O God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Before your passion, you confirm the universal resurrection. When you raise from the dead Lazarus, so Christ our God. Therefore, like the children of those days, carrying the symbols of victory, God above the heavens and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and may your glory be above all the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly light, giving in us mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you. souls that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification and do we give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Father, give the blessing. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Christ our God, you are the fulfillment of the home prophet, you have fulfilled this position of the Father. Throughout your journey, upon this always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. At this time, we will bless the palms before they are distributed to them today for your homes and your cars and your houses and your businesses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, our God, enthroned above the cherubim, you have stirred up your power and sent your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to redeem the world through his cross, his burial, and his resurrection. When he came to Jerusalem to his voluntary passion, the people living in darkness and the shadow of death, taking up the symbols of victory, boughs of trees and palm branches, foretold the resurrection. Master, as we too imitating them carry palms and branches on the eve of this feast and watch over us, as we offer you Hosanna like the multitudes and children, safeguard us so that in hymns and spiritual songs we too may worthily witness the life-giving resurrection on the third day. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning to all of you, and again, Kronja Pola. A cloak, a branch, a choice, and two conversations that might have happened. First one, he's coming. Who's coming? Jesus. Jesus who? Jesus, the one they're saying raised a man from the dead yesterday. Impossible. Conversation two. He's coming. Who? Jesus. Who's that? He's a king. Well, I've never seen a king before. We need to do something special for him. I don't have anything but my cloak. Okay, let's make a carpet for him to walk on. I'll take mine off too. We can lay them down. Oh yeah, and how about those palm branches? We can pull them down and make a path through the street. It's not much, but hey, it's all we have. Yeah, I can't wait to see the king. Both of those conversations, imagined though they were, could have easily taken place in the streets of Jerusalem about 2,100 years ago. The first conversation, my dear friends, was probably a conversation between two adults. And if someone had said someone was coming through town who would actually raise someone from the dead, the adult logical reasoning mind, tempered by years of challenges and disappointments and false promises from every corner of life, would probably have said, impossible, because it would have guarded itself against yet another letdown. The second conversation, however, maybe was between two younger, innocent children, or at least two people with still childlike wonder in their hearts and their souls, and they were still full of hope and promise. And it's probably that kind of excitement and joy that led to the scene described today in the Gospel of Matthew. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, he says, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds went before him and followed him, shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. What a joy, the heart of a child. Just a few days before, as he was blessing the children that came to him, Jesus actually rebuked or kind of scolded his own disciples who were trying to keep these children away. I guess as we say in today's terms, go away, Rugrat, right? But Jesus actually told them, don't stop them. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Well, likewise, if that wasn't enough, as he went into Jerusalem and then went into the temple and he began performing miracles, including cleansing lepers, he was praised by these wonderstruck children who saw people with diseases coming in and walking out healed. And the authorities challenged him to make them stop. Stop praising him. But he responded with a quote from the book of Psalms. Have you never heard? Out of the mouths of babes and children comes forth perfect praise. My friends, the reality is that, like today, this big event in the royal city so long ago was probably surrounded with politics, with religious arguments, and with social upheaval. But Jesus really reminds us today that we will not find peace, nor will we find him in those things if we choose to preoccupy our lives with him, with those things. Instead of him, let us not wonder why we don't have peace, why we don't find Christ every day. Three times in just a few days, the Lord says that it's a child heart, a child's heart, that is best to receive him. So today, I'm going to offer that as our single goal, to receive Jesus into the child's heart within us, full of hope, full of promise, 
and full of love. But the question remains, how do we offer him perfect praise? The answer, through that same childlike heart that is still inside all of us. But what can we offer? Well, why did they use cloaks and branches that day? As the imaginary conversation at the beginning said, that's what they had. So how do we receive him? What can we offer him? It seems that we're called like them to offer whatever we have. So listen up. No matter who you are, no matter what you make, no matter where you live, no matter how you dress, here are a few things that you can offer as forms of perfect praise. Music, hymns and songs, sing to the Lord we heard today. How about words? St. Basil in his commentary on Psalm 28 says, you have intelligence. Meditate on the words that you use. Likewise, he continues, and he says, not just the words, before they even get out. What about the thoughts? He says, give praise with not only your voice, but also with your mind, because the mind is what's going to drive the rest. How about thanks? We hear in the Orthro service, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, Psalm 136. All of these things start to work on our heart as we train our thoughts, as we use good words, as we sing and it lifts us up to joy. And those things and all that follow bring about a pure heart. So that's another one. In tone one of the hymns of praise from the Ortho service, it says, account us worthy with a pure heart to praise you and to glorify you. And all of that then opens the door to what we really need, a life worthy of God, a life worthy to be called a Christian with the name of Jesus Christ. St. Basil again on Psalm 28 says, God in himself has no need to receive glory from you, but he wants you to become worthy to receive glory from him. We're the church of the New Testament. So the days of sacrificing animal and such other offerings are no longer required, and I thank God for that all the time because slicing up animals and draining their blood is not really my idea of worship these days. But sacrifices to the Lord are really still part of perfect praise. St. Paul says in Hebrews 13, 15, Thereby him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips. Give thanks to his name. Think about the last week. Think about the words that came out of your mouth and the attitude that drove them. Were they words and attitudes of thanks and of praise and of joy and of lifting up others? If they weren't, we have some work to do. St. Paisios reminds us that there's no time in our life that God is not worthy of that praise. He says in spiritual councils, you must praise the benevolent God for this great gift, day and night, and shed tears of gratitude and joy before him. Your tears don't always have to be tears of sorrow, you know. God gifts you tears of joy when you open your heart and you know his presence there, and you see his wonders, and you cry. My dear Holy Trinity family, as the entrance verse said today, God is the Lord, and he has revealed himself to us. Not just us. He has indeed revealed himself to you. He comes into your life, into your home, into your place, your workplace, and most of all, every day, your heart. Welcome him, thank him, and praise him. These beautiful crosses made by our youth and families yesterday are symbols of today's feast of Palm Sunday. Now, we often think of them as mementos representing what the crowds and the children offered him, branches at his feet. But allow me to remind you, turning this on its head, 
that when woven in the shape of a cross, a simple palm branch more represents what he has given us, the joy of our salvation through his willing sacrifice on the cross for us. I really don't want to make it any more complicated that, than that today. I'm so happy to see you all here. What we have, what we do, what we say, and how we live can all really become parts of the perfect praise that we offer to him. So today I'm going to ask the choir to help me close up. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to also join us, because we're going to close the message together with a hymn of praise. And it's the hymn of praise that the church uses. We already did it once today. When the holy gifts of the body and blood of Christ are consecrated, we know it all as, in Greek, say numen, but I'd like the choir to lead us today, and I'd like you all to join. So please rise. Because in case you have the temptation to walk out today and say, I don't know how to praise God. What do I have that's worthy of Him? You have this gift of the church. And at any time of your life, not just in the liturgy, feel free to use it. The words are, and I believe you know them, we praise you, we praise you, we bless you, we bless you, we give thanks to you and we pray to you. We pray to you, O Lord, our God. So please bow your heads, join me, join the choir, and sing from the child's heart within you as you praise Christ today with perfect praise. We will do the apolysis, the conclusion of the liturgy, and the prayer for the uh, meal today. So please remain standing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Christ, our God, and a hope glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who for our salvation came riding on the colt of a donkey, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy, glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy, glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy, victorious martyrs, of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, Saint Agapitos of Rome, Hadrian the new martyr, Macarius the bishop of Corinth, Saint Donan and the monk martyrs with him, Simeon and the holy, the holy martyr, and those with him whose memories we celebrate this day, our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, and of all the saints, through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Please join as we offer the prayer of the blessing for the food today. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Father. Christ our God, as we celebrate your uh, entry into Jerusalem on this day, we ask that you bless the food and drink that is offered in celebration of that feast, 
the hands that have prepared it, especially our Goya families. Bless this community. Grant that we may all be worthy to celebrate together the joy of your holy resurrection. For you are holy now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have a few things, and thank you for your patience, a few things to take care of. First of all, the parish council is going to begin with the tray, and thank you for your offerings that you are making today in support of the ministries of Holy Trinity Church. We are also going to be doing our prayer partner cards, so they will come out in a moment, and we have a few announcements. Thank you for your patience. Okay, uh, I believe almost all of you know about these, but these are our quarterly prayer partner cards. So here is how it works. Everybody is going to take a card, there's some pens in here, to put your first name only, your baptismal name if you can, and hold on to that card. Just pass, pass the basket down and others will take the cards. After everybody has written them, we will collect them all. Then when you come up, you're going to receive, with Andidron, a name of a person who you do not know, just the name. And we're going to ask you to pray for them every day from April, May, and to the end of June. Likewise, when you do those prayers, you are going to know that somebody somewhere in this room, somewhere in this community, is praying for you every day. So our commitment is, I'm going to pray for you every day, and I thank you for your prayers for me. Continues to bring us together as a community and also obeys the commandment of St. James, who says in 516, James 516, pray for one another. So we'll start those. Just take a card, write your first name on it, and hold on to the card. It'll be collected in a few minutes. <clears throat> While we have you all here, <clears throat> Our stewardship ministry has uh, requested an opportunity to address you, and honestly, we do this with a bit of trepidation because the last thing people want to hear when they come to church is about giving money, but stewardship isn't just about money. Stewardship is about your total commitment to the life of the church, and since we have so many here today, it is a really good opportunity. Michael, Mike Criotis, as soon as you're done filling out your prayer card, would you mind coming up and offering some encouragement to explain to everybody how important it is to offer their stewardship to the church. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. This is a busy day, and I'm going to make it short. Um, if you uh, just can, um, can multitask and do your cards while you're listening, <laughs> uh, it's very important because to me, I think it's better to do person to person, these kinds of things, because how many people get the herald? in your homes. How many? Let me see. Hey, yeah, just about everyone. If you don't, please sign your name in the back because it's, it's good to have the Herald. It's, it's our newsletter that goes in everybody's home. And at the table in the back, you can actually add your name to it. But how many of you who have the Herald actually read the uh, stewardship page this month? Be careful. It's, we're in church, so don't lie. Please. It's Dr. Chris. <laughs> Maybe two or three people. See, that's my point. You have to be in person to say these things. Because in writing and in emails and mail, things get lost. So um, this is about our treasures. You know, the time, talents, and treasures are the three T's of stewardship, the three, the three really standards that keep this church going. Your time and, and talents are evident throughout this whole church. You do everything possible to do this to, to help us work this church, but the one thing that we want to talk about today is treasures. In that page, in the Herald, when you do open it and you have a little time, sit, sit down and read that page. It talks about the treasure side, which says how many pledges we expect every year for this church to run properly. And usually we have 300 pledges, so there are about 300 active members, families. 
We have 175 pledges to date. It's almost four months in the year, so we expect to have about 250 by now. We have 175. That covers about $270,000, which is a great amount. But the church budget is, you know how much do we need to, for this church to actually operate? And I know we're talking about money, but I don't hesitate because the Bible says, we, the Bible talks about money 780 times. <laughs> it's more times than prayer <laughs> and grace. So I'm okay with it. I'm fine. And plus, you know, we deal with this every day. It takes six hundred and eighty thousand dollars to run this church. Six hundred and eighty thousand. It's almost. It's over two thousand dollars a day. So if we have three hundred and sixty-five members donating two thousand dollars each, we basically cover the budget of this church. Would would end up be great, right? But we have about three hundred members, and we donate about four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So we still have a gap of 250000 if my math is right. Uh, we covered that with taking money out of our savings from the festival, from the catering committee, from things like that. Wouldn't it be great if the festival didn't have to fund the operations of the church and every day we work our butts off, you know, it's like going into something more meaningful, a ministry somewhere. So that's our goal, to improve our, our treasures, part of our stewardship. So, I don't want to make it too long. I just want you to be, to be um, you know, cautious about your pledges and turn them in. We have extra pledge cards in the back. If you don't have one or if you forgot it, just please pick up one. If, if there isn't one there, just send us an email, stewardship at holytrinity.org, pgh.org, uh, pgh and we'll send you one. Soon we'll have one online. We'll make it easier for everyone. And don't forget that there is a second section with the consecration of this church. All the blank walls are going to be covered with beautiful icons. Icon Iconostasi is going to be gorgeous when it's all done. That also takes some money. So fill out that form too. So that's my, that's my plea today, especially for you. And I'm so happy that you're all here because some of you I don't see every Sunday to just come face to face. And some of you who have like been a little bit hesitant. You know how inflation works, right? The same is the church inflation. Everything costs so much more now. So if you've given an X amount before, don't try to keep an X amount today. X plus 10%, you know what I mean? Because the church supplies, the office supplies, the maintenance, everything costs so much more. The church needs to stay open because how do we really relate to the grace of Christ, other than just keeping this open. Um, I was listening to a uh, quick one, uh, an interview the other day on the radio, and it was with a rabbi and a, an Orthodox uh, priest. No, they did not walk into a bar. <laughs> there is no punchline. But the interviewer asked the Orthodox priest, it was Father Constantine Lazarakis, I remember because it's St. Lazarus yesterday, from uh, Long, Long Island. And the interviewer said, how, Father, in this time of, of pain and, um, and evil, how, how, how do you talk to your parish, to your parishioners? And he said this line. He said, just remember, even a small amount of evil leaves an impact in the world, but a small amount of love leaves ripples of grace throughout the world. So I thought of this church, you know, what the best, what the better place to leave a ripple of grace than under this, his dome, you know? And it's not the amount, you know, don't worry about it, I'm a small part of this, you know, be the bee, as we say in the um, Orthodox religion, in the, uh, in the teachings. You know, a bee li lives 40 days and produces less than a teaspoon of honey less than a teaspoon of honey. But even though it's just a teaspoon for us, it's a lifetime for the bee. It, thought, it, it goes on over 1,000 flowers to get a teaspoon of honey. So if you have a teaspoon of honey, you provide it to the hive, that's all we need, really. Because then there isn't just enough for the hive to survive the winter, but it's also enough for us to get some honey for ourselves, for the rest of the community, right? So that's what it is. This church is a hive, and you're the bee. So be the bee. That's all we need. So please, send your pledges in. 
Your treasures are important, how, no matter how it's small or large. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Carlo Basca. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate that. So, please forgive a few more announcements just while they are passing, while they're collecting the cards. So let's go with the second pass and take your prayer card and drop it in. And when you leave, when you leave today, we don't have to be from this community, by the way. These prayers work everywhere. So when you leave today, you'll get the prayer card with your undidero. I want to welcome John and Aggie Mark uh, Markinich, uh, who are visiting today and uh, have recently moved into the area. Welcome wherever you are. Where are you? Welcome. Nice to have you with us today. Very good. And as well, I see a lot of other faces. Welcome to any of our visitors that have come in. I realize some of you may be in for family that are celebrating on the Western calendar Easter today. Uh, but uh, we, enjoy, we enjoy having you here. And please join us for Pascha next week as well. Uh, I want to welcome a very special guest today. So he's been in the Herald and in the Bulletin. This is, step up here, is uh, Yano Samutalis. Yano is our 2022 seminarian in residence. He's from New Jersey. He's a second year student in the School of Theology. And he has been helping us out. He came yesterday, did a great job coordinating the young people with the projects that they were working on and has been going to be chanting the next, what, 14 services with us over the next week or so. Night and day, he's going to be assisting George, our Protopsalti, Steve, our assistant chanter, and uh, we are very thankful to have you here. So please, when you see Yano today, welcome him. He's about our sixth or so time round that we've done the uh, seminary in residence, and it's been a real blessing. So we're going to be heading out tomorrow and Tuesday to do visitations, and then we have services, so lots to do this week. Welcome, Yano. Our Palm Sunday lunches is today. And although the Goya did say that they needed reservations in advance, they made a little more knowing that some people will not be able to do that. So we have a few extras. So if you did not make a reservations and you still want to come, there, is, there are a few plates left. So please come and, uh, and join them. There's a delicious, uh, wonderful uh, uh, salmon this year, uh, uh, salmon. So also, Philopkos has made Pasca bread. They have about 100 loaves or so. That's available in the gallery. There's also a beautiful setup with all these wonderful tulips in bags. And the visitation ministry would like those delivered to the needy and the shut-in that we have in the community. Um, and we would really like your help. So if you can just take one or two and deliver them on behalf of the community, it is really a, uh, a lesson of love. Finally, on the back, of the bulletin, as you've seen online, as you've seen in the emails, is the Holy Week service schedule. We will begin this evening with the first bridegroom service, and we will continue morning and night for the rest of the week. Uh, please come and join us for all of those. Next Saturday evening, we have, of course, the resurrection service, followed by the wonderful Anastasi dinner with wonderful homemade Greek lamb, as always. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you all week. God bless you and your families. Thank you for being with us today. and. Uh, Please join us for the luncheon. Thank you.